Good afternoon. Some sentences of Scripture as we begin our service this afternoon. These words from John's Gospel, chapter 11. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And words from Paul as he writes in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8. I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We welcome you here today to the parish church of Sego. It is a sad occasion as we gather together to give thanks for the life of Jim Hamilton. We acknowledge at this time the sorrow that we feel. And as we mourn, we also want to take that opportunity to give thanks for the life of Jim who impacted all of you who are gathered here today and so many more who can't be with us. As a parish church, we want to, as well as extend our condolences to you as family and friends, we also want to uh, offer our apologies that we do have to meet under uh, certain restrictions. Uh, We thank you for working with us in them uh, in terms of maintaining social distancing and masking. Uh, During our service, uh, we will have a a couple of opportunities to sing, and we'd want to encourage you to join in with us in that, uh, if you wear a mask and and sing gently. But we do apologize that we do have to meet under these restrictions, but we pray that this service today will be meaningful and will, uh, will be an encouragement to you as a family as we gather today. But as we want to gather and and mourn and give thanks, we are conscious of the family circle who are with us here and some who cannot be with us today. You're all very much in our prayers. We want to lift up Jim's siblings, Billy and David, his children, Amanda, Mark, Moira, and Pamela, and his grandchildren, Selena, Richard, James, Tyrone, Rachel, Claire, Hannah, Joel, Tyler, and Logan and all of you who are gathered here today whose lives have been touched by Jim. And we pray that you will feel something of of God's presence and God's comfort this day. We're gonna sing our first hymn. It's a wonderful hymn that reminds us that uh, through good and bad times, we can rest assured on the uh, ever abiding presence of the Lord. So we're gonna stand and sing gently the hymn, Abide With Me.
Please take your seats. We have come here today to remember before God our dear brother Jim, to give thanks for his life, to leave him in the keeping of God, his creator, redeemer, and judge, to commit his body to be buried, and to comfort one another in our grief, in the hope that is ours through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we pray that here today we may know the peace of Christ in communion with all God's faithful servants. Let us pray. God of all consolation, whose son Jesus Christ was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend, look with compassion on us, your children, in our loss. Give to our troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm now going to invite up David and Hannah who are going to bring our readings to us. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will never slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over you, your life. The Lord watches over you, coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Thank you to David and Hannah for bringing those readings to us. As we gather today, we do recognize that such days are filled with sadness as we remember and give thanks for Jim and the impact that he had on all of you who knew him, those who are gathered here and those who are joining in with us from afar, and many who could not be here because of the restrictions but in their own way would wish to pay a tribute to Jim. We're also conscious that in these times of restrictions, we are unable to give thanks and remember in the way that we might like to. And so it presents us with certain challenges today. However, we do want to take this opportunity to remember and give thanks for the life of Jim. And that although he is no longer with us, the memories that he leaves with each one of you will be something that you'll be able to cherish today and in the days to come. Just to say a little bit about Jim. Jim was 
born on the 29th of April 1940 and spent most of his formative years growing up in the midst of World War II, which I'm sure probably gave him a particular uh, outlook on life. He was born the second of four sons to Josephine and James Alexander. Along with his brothers, the late Morris, Billy and David, the family lived in Kildare Street in Belfast. And as a young boy, Jim attended Linfield School. But as was the case with many young men of his generation, he left school at the early and tender age of 14 and he began his apprenticeship at a shirt factory in Belfast. It was on one fateful evening as a young man that Jim happened to travel down from Belfast to Carlton Street, Orange Hall, Portadown, which at that time was a uh, well-known local dance spot. And it was there that he met Avril, the love of his life. And this began a great love which lasted 58 years until Avril sadly passed away last year. Over time, their their romance blossomed, and after a courtship which saw numerous train journeys and uh, many letters which had been written, they were married on the 10th of March, 1962, here in Segal Parish Church. And together they moved into a home in Derry Keevan on the Dungannon Road. It was a home that would would have been fair to say had very limited facilities. Uh, Pamela shared with me that the main water supply was actually the well outside. But it was where they began their married life together, and I'm sure it was a place of many happy memories. They moved twice more before they finally settled in the house in Clambrassel Drive. And Jim and Avril had four children, Amanda, Mark, Moira, and Pamela, and they had nine grandchildren, Selena, Richard, James, Tyrone, Rachel, Claire, Hannah, Joel, Tyler, and Logan. Work was very important to Jim, Some may have even considered him a bit of a workaholic. After moving to the area and capitalizing on his training as an apprentice, he started work as a cutting room manager in Spence Bryson Shirt Factory here in Portadown, whilst also at the same time serving part-time in the Royal Ulster Constabulary, both of which I'm sure kept him very busy. He was fondly known by the locals as Jimmy the Coal Man, But Jim was an incredibly hard-working man, and it was a significant part of his life. However, his incredible work ethic did not save him from the occasional mishap. Pamela shared this uh, fascinating and unforgettable story of a time how he backed a a lorry containing shirts into the water in Kilkeel Harbour. I'm sure at the time he was probably quite mortified, um, but some lucky folk over in England probably got a free shirt or two out of the deal a few weeks later as the the cargo made its way over the the Irish Sea. The Loyal Orders was also an important part in Jim's life. He was a member of Sego Orange and Black Lodge, and walking on the 12th and 13th of July was something that he relished and looked forward to. Of course, he was a very keen walker, and he was often spotted walking the family dog, Sam, down the Guilford Road. Gardening was another love of his, and he enjoyed spending time in the garden with his plants. He also loved the family holidays, especially those holidays to the sun, and he loved traveling to Australia to see his son Mark and his family. After retiring, that that theme of travel was picked up because Jim and Avril Avril bought a motorhome together, and this gave them the freedom to travel throughout Europe with friends. Again, I'm sure it was something that they made many happy memories from and enjoyed immensely. But family was so important to Jim, and he dearly loved his family, and he loved his grandchildren. He took a great interest in their lives, encouraging, encouraging them in school and with their hobbies, and he would have done anything for them. And spending time with them was a source of great delight and happiness for him. Jim was a loving, caring, kind, helpful, selfless family man. And Pamela shared how Jim constantly placed his wife and his family first. And I know that he will be missed by you all and all that knew him. The last few years have been difficult for you as a family. As first, Jim was diagnosed with dementia and sadly at the passing of Avril during lockdown last year. I know that from talking to Pamela that that Jim and Avril were inseparable over the course of much of their lives. And it will give you some great comfort 
that Jim and Avril will be together again. And in some way today, we, we also want to give thanks, uh, not just for Jim's life, but also for the life of Avril. We remember her today, um, given that last year her funeral took place in a lockdown. And it's so appropriate that we give thanks for them both, for the love that they shared together, and for the role that they had in each one of your lives. Everyone here will have their own special memories of Jim, memories of a kind and caring person, memories of enjoyable times together and laughter, memories of a father, a grandfather, a brother, a friend, moments that may even bring a tear to your eye as you remember them. Today, Jim leaves a hole in your lives that you will mourn for some time to come. And this is a natural experience when we lose someone whom we love, and never should we feel that it is wrong to mourn and miss our loved ones. And yet our readings today remind us of an important truth that we should remember in in such times of sadness as these. One simple fact that, that doesn't take away our sadness, but it does give us a comfort to lean on, that God is with us in our grief, and that he prepares a place for those who love him. In our reading from John, Jesus comforts his disciples with the words, do not let your hearts be troubled. In moments like this, as we mourn the loss of a loved one, our hearts are troubled. We miss them, and our hearts are heavy at their loss. And yet Jesus' words here speak to a greater truth. Why in this moment are his disciples not to be troubled? Why might we not be troubled. Jesus explains that he is going ahead of his disciples to prepare a place for them. He says that in his father's house, there are many rooms, rooms that are set aside for his people. The word that Jesus uses here in the original language is the word, the word for room is the word monet. And it indicates that this is a home. It's not a transitory dwelling. This is a place where someone might make their home. It's a place to be lived in. Jesus prepares a place where we might dwell with him forever. And homes conjure up many memories for us, many feelings. Our homes can be a special and significant place in our lives. They're a special place for us and our families. They're a place of comfort, a place where our loved ones are looked after, where they find hospitality, care and generosity. Whilst those are left will miss that, we can take comfort that Jim is now in the home that Jesus has prepared for him, where there is no more suffering and where every tear is wiped away. Our reading from the Psalm, Psalm 121, is another well-known passage, and it's a psalm that's been set many times to music, and its words provide great comfort to us in times of distress. This psalm is known as a song of ascents, and it's a song that would have been uh, sang probably whilst pilgrims made their way to Jerusalem. Uh, you can imagine that, that ascent up onto the Mount of Zion. And it would have reminded them of those times when their people had found themselves in difficult, difficult places. This psalm is not a psalm of lament or sorrow, but rather it speaks to a confidence that the psalmist has. The psalm begins with a, a question. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? We see the source of of the confidence that the psalmist has, for they immediately respond that their help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. In the trials of life, as I'm sure many of us have experienced, and indeed in these times of mourning, we too might look to the heavens, or to others, or even to ourselves, and ask the same question. Where does my help come from? Who or what is there that I can trust in my time of distress and mourning? Who can bring me through this part of the journey? Throughout Psalm 121, the psalmist answers these questions for us. Why does our help come from the Lord, and why can we trust in him at all times? The psalmist assures us that God never slumbers, He is our shade, our protection, 
and he watches over us in our coming and going, both now and forevermore. As I mentioned, as a song of a sense, this would have been a song that, that would have been sung or recited by pilgrims on their journey. In a way, we too are pilgrims, aren't we? As we make our way through the, the journey of life. We are keenly aware that life holds for us the heights of joy and love and the depths of despair and sadness. And this psalmist assures us that the Lord is indeed with us, helping us wherever we may find ourselves on the journey. We are reminded in this psalm that the Lord will not let our foot slip, and he does not slumber. As pilgrims on a journey, we have that confidence that whatever the journey holds for us, whatever obstacles might be in our way, the Lord's vigilance and love for us is eternal and never ceases. As these pilgrims make their way to Jerusalem singing this song on their journey, their footing would have been important. They would not want to have fallen or stumbled. And thus, as they sing this song of ascent, they have confidence that the ever-present guidance of God will see them safely to their destination. Just as we too are pilgrims on our own journey, just as Jim was a pilgrim on his journey, God too can guide our footsteps along the way, making sure we do not stumble. And the psalmist reminds us that God provides a shade, a comfort for those pilgrims distressed by the hot sun in the sky as they traveled on their way. A shade protects those under it from the harmful effects of the sun, and we have that confidence that God can protect us. Finally, we can be assured that God watches over us. He watches over us in good times when the journey of life is going well, and he watches over us in our difficult times when things trouble us, when we find ourselves as we do today in that time of mourning. And the Lord is an ever-present help. The pilgrimage of life that each one of us are on will have an end too, yet the Christian hope is that it is not an end, but rather it is just a beginning as those who love the Lord will one day enter into his kingdom, a place where there is no more suffering and where every tear will be wiped away. There will be a time for mourning where that sense of loss that you feel is raw. Yet let us remember that on this part of the journey, God is with us and loves us and he invites us to experience his embrace. So as you mourn the loss of Jim today, let us also remember his life and give thanks. He leaves a legacy with each one of you that can be remembered and celebrated. Yes, it is sad today as you will miss that place that Jim had in your life, but as you mourn today, you can also give thanks for a life well lived, for the times that you all shared with him, for the memories that you made, and for the impact that he made on your lives. And may all who mourn this day draw near to God and find his love and his comfort. Let us pray. Just as we enter this time of prayer, we're going to take a few moments in the silence to speak out our own prayers to God and to give him thanks for the life of Jim. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your own image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Jim, for the grace and mercy he received from you, for all that was good and true in his life, and for the memories we treasure today. Your mighty power brings good out of evil, joy out of grief, and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn. We remember especially today Jim's family circle and all those whose lives were touched by him. Give them patient faith in times of darkness and strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. You're tender towards your children and your mercy is over all your works. Heal the memories of hurt and failure. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us on earth to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. And merciful Father, entrusting into your hands all that you have made, and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, 
We make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our service will be drawing to a close in a few minutes, and after we will go to the uh, churchyard for the committal. Uh, I would encourage you to to join us, but uh, to maintain that social distancing and, and wear masks where possible. We're going to stand now and sing our final hymn, Near My God to Thee. It's a hymn that reminds us that uh, for those of us on the journey of life, as we draw to the end of that life, that God is ever present in our lives. So we stand to sing this wonderful hymn with such beautiful words, Near My God to Thee. Let us pray. O God, the maker and redeemer of all, we pray for the coming of your kingdom, 
that in the last day when you bring together all things in Christ, we with all who have died in him may enjoy the fulfillment of your promises through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.